Okay. So, I wish I, I wish I could do it like I would do with my six-year-old. Uh, you have to imagine the pictures, because that's not too easy. <clears throat> anyway. Where you at? Where you at? We have our own way of living down here in New Orleans, and our own way of talking, too. And that's what we like to say when we want to tell a friend hello. So, where you at? Lots of kids have nicknames, but I want to tell you the story of how I got mine. Just like when you listen to your favorite song, let's start at the beginning, because this is a story about music. But before you can understand how much music means to me, you have to know how important it is to my hometown, my greatest inspiration. I grew up in a neighborhood in New Orleans called Treme. Anytime, a day or night, you can hear music floating in the air. And there was music in my house, too. My big brother, James, played the trumpet so loud, you could hear him halfway across town. He was the leader of his own band, and my friends and I would pretend to be in the band, too. Follow me, James would say. There's one time every year that's more exciting than any other. Mardi Gras. Parades fill the streets and beaded necklaces are thrown through the air to the crowd. I love the brass bands with their own trumpets, trombones, saxophones, and the biggest brass instrument of them all, the tuba, which rested over the musician's head like an elephant's trunk. Where you at? Where you at? The musicians would call. All day long, I could see brass bands parade by my house while my neighbors danced along. I love these parades during Mardi Gras because they made everyone forget about their troubles for a little while. People didn't have a lot of money in Treme, but we always had a lot of music. I listened to all those sounds and mixed them together, just like how we make our food. We take one big pot and throw in sausage, crab, shrimp, chicken, vegetables, rice, whatever's in the kitchen, and stir it all together and let it cook. When it's done, it's the most delicious taste you've ever had. We call it gumbo, and that's what I wanted my music to sound like. Different styles combined to create my own musical gumbo. But first, I needed an instrument. The great thing about music is that you don't even need a real instrument to play. So my friends and I decided to make our own. We might have sounded different from the real brass bands, but we felt like the greatest musicians in Trume. We were making music, and that's all that mattered. Then one day I found a broken trombone that looked too beaten up to make music anymore. It didn't sound perfect, but finally with the real instrument in my hand, I was ready to play. And here's a picture of that. It's so far away, I don't think you can see. But Brian is drawn, his, his drawn, painted, illustrated in these uh, opaque crowns on their heads. It's really, really beautiful. These, these young men, these boys, with crowns on their heads, because that's exactly what they deserve. It's a great book. And there's a follow-up to this book, which we had earlier, Five O'Clock Band. That was the name of the band that they made. We called it the Five O'Clock Band because that's when they would get together to rehearse and to play after school at five o'clock. So they were five o'clock band. So that's a little bit of trouble, sure.